I'm a senior business development manager for Unity Analytics. And today I'm going to show you how Unity services can be used to help you build a great game. So um, one of Unity's core missions is to solve hard problems, especially the problems that developers are facing. So we talk to thousands of developers, and we know that it's really hard to acquire the right players. It's really hard to keep your players playing, to keep them playing, and ultimately to monetize your players. And so with these kind of core challenges in mind, Unity is releasing a suite of services that are aimed at helping you uh, to tackle these problems head on and ultimately enable developer success. So the first service I want to cover is called Unity Analytics. And so what sets Unity Analytics apart from other services are the three following things. The first is that it's multi-platform. Um, we've heard from developers that you didn't want to integrate multiple analy analytics solutions for your different platforms. And so here you can see all the platforms that Unity Analytics supports. Um, including the, uh, VR, the new VR platforms. Second, um, the analytics is built for games because Unity um, Analytics is made for games. Um, a great example of this is the heat maps feature. So this is a screenshot of that feature, and what that does is it allows you to take data collected from Unity Analytics and take that data and aggregate it and put it on top of an actual scene. So this is an actual game scene, and the parts that are red are where players are congregating the most. So using this data, you can figure out where your players are getting stuck, exactly where they're headed, and you can even replay their movements within your scene. And then finally, um, one thing that sets us apart and that no other analytics tool will be able to provide is that we're natively integrated with the Unity Engine. Um, what that means is that you don't need any SDKs in order to enable, in enable integration, and it's super duper, super duper quick to do that. So let me show you just how easy it is. And so here, I'm in Unity 5.3, and I've just created a project, and I'm gonna assign it to an org. So right now, on this right hand of the screen, we're looking at the services panel. Um, if you're using Unity and you can't find it, you can always find it by clicking here on the cloud. So the cloud is where the cloud services live. And so to enable analytics, it's super simple. All you have to do is hit turn on analytics, hit enable analytics here, and designate whether or not your game is directed under children uh, under the age of 13. Save changes. And that's all you have to do to turn on the analytics integration. And so I can click here to go to my dashboard. And what this will do is um, it'll pull up the Unity Analytics dashboard. And so this is where you can check to make sure that you've completed integration correctly. Um, we've heard a lot of times from developers that with other analytics solutions, uh, you could integrate, but you might have to wait a couple hours or up to a day before you figured out whether or not you integrated your analytics correctly. And so, Let's wait for this page to load. And the analytics is built into the engine beginning in Unity 5.2, uh, just like Unity adds. Uh, all right, so here we have our app, CC Singapore 16. And um, now what we're going to do is we're going to test to make sure that we've completed integration. So I'm in the integration page, and um, we've connected our project. We followed these steps. We've enabled analytics. And now we're going to hit play to validate. So here, you can see it says waiting for test data. So I'm gonna go back to the editor, and I'm gonna press play in the editor. So um, if I've done this correctly, when I go back to my dashboard, you'll start to see events directly from the editor flowing into your dashboard. So that's it, that's all you need to do in order to enable integration and turn on Unity Analytics. So again, these services are focused on making it super easy, super easy to use, super easy to integrate, and super easy to get value out of. So now that we've completed basic integration, I'm gonna show you really quickly what that looks like. And so this is the analytics dashboard. We're looking at a sample app called Fruit Slasher. So just by clicking those five clicks, um, right away you'll be able to tell how many players you have, how long have they been playing for, and um, what their retention looks like. Additionally, um, we've built really powerful tools that allow you to really dig deep into your data. So um, let's say you wanted to look at your retention by geography. Um, what I can do here is click in View Data Explorer, and this will take you to um, what I like to call our Slice and Dice tool. So here we can look at day one retention by different segments. So we can look at day one retention by all the players in our game. Uh, we can also look at day one retention based on our um, users from, let's say, Russia. You can also look at custom event data. So we make it really easy for you to capture basic metrics like DAU, MAU, day seven, day seven retention. Um, we also make it easy for you to visualize your custom event data. 
basically any data point that you want to send to us that's triggered in your game, you can do so um, really easily using the analytics integration. So in this example, let's say uh, we want to look at the game start event, and we want to look at um, how many people started the game in a certain mode. So here it shows you, um, for this game, uh, you can either start in Zen mode, classic mode, or rage mode. And so here it shows you how many people, how many of your players are triggering those modes each day. Um, if you click on this pie chart, uh, you can also get a distribution over time. So this is telling you that over this time period, the past month, most of your players are playing on classic mode, um, the next 30% are playing on Zen mode, and then a small percentage, uh, less than 8% are playing on rage mode. So again, the focus of the analytics is to make it really easy for you to get started right away to get uh, fast insights into your data. So the next service that I want to touch on um, is called Unity IAP. And so this service was launched in Unity 5.3. And so if you've ever set up IAP in your game before, um, you know that you just can't uh, set up your code, set up your inventory for Google Play, and then copy and paste that code and recycle it for uh, the Apple Store or for the Windows Store. And so just like the Unity Editor, which allows you to write once and deploy to multiple stores, you can do the same thing with Unity IAP. That means all you have to do is uh, set up your transactions once, and then you'll be able to build to Google Play, um, Apple Store, Windows Store, and Amazon Store. This has been one of our most popular features, and in fact, um, as soon as we launched this, the immediate demand was for us to expand our reach, and so that's exactly what we're doing. Um, so right now we support, uh, very soon we'll be supporting Galaxy Store, Tizen Store, and uh, we've partnered with local payment providers based in Southeast Asia, like MOL, and so we'll be um, supporting their payment methods very, very soon. And so just like Unity Analytics, again, all these services are built into the editor and live here in the uh, services window. So to enable IAP, all you have to do is, again, click IAP and then hit enable. So here you'll see the option to import the store packages. So um, Unity IAP is unique in that these, the uh, packages for the stores exist as a plugin outside of the Unity Editor. So what that means is that um, we can update the plugin more frequently than we can make updates to the Unity Editor. So let's say we add support for other stores, um, or if you know, Google Play makes a change, um, it's on us as Unity to make sure that we're on top of those changes. And so um, that allows us to be really flexible and really on top of what the platform providers are doing with respect to IAP. And that also means that when we launch support for additional stores, um, we can do so via the plugin. And that means you don't have to upgrade to the latest version of Unity in order to take advantage of the latest Unity stores. Another thing is that if you enable IAP, you also get Unity Analytics. And so uh, you'll be able to see all your revenue data, all your engagement, all your behavioral data on one uh, dashboard. So the last but not least, um, last service I want to talk about is Unity Ads. And so what sets Unity Ads apart from other ad networks are the following things. First is just like Unity Analytics and Unity IAP, Unity Ads is built into the Unity Engine. That means, again, there's no SDKs. It doesn't take hours in order to set up your ads, your IAP, or your analytics. And so I'm going to go back to the editor. And I'm going to go back to uh, my favorite window, which is the Services panel. And so here is where Ads lives. Again, if you can't find this when you start up Unity, uh, just look for the cloud in the upper right corner, and that will open up this panel. So to turn on ads, it's just like analytics and IAP. You just hit on. Flip the switch here. And then that's it. Um, and then we also have some code snippets here to help you uh, here with some examples of where to integrate your ad placement. So again, these services are here from the very beginning. They live in the editor. There's no SDKs required. Um, and because of that, the impact of the performance of your app is very, very minimal, if nothing. So not only does Unity Ads have a very tight integration with Unity Editor, um, but because we're Unity, we're also focused on games. That means we have expertise in games, and we can um, help you figure out where the right place is to put the ad placement such that you don't take away from the game experience. And finally, um, Unity is a truly global company, and so we are dedicated to making sure that um, we're dedicated to uh, Asia success. And so that means we have Unity Ads teams based in China, in Japan, in Korea, and in Singapore. In fact, the Singapore team is here today. If you have any questions about Unity Ads, please come visit us. We're at, uh, we have a booth uh, right outside in the main hallway. All right, so a common misconception about ads is that if you show ads, um, that it takes away from kind of the gameplay and that it interrupts the gameplay and that players don't actually like ads. And so what we found is that that can be true 
if the ad is shown at the wrong time. And so here you have um, the core game loop, which is you play, you upgrade, you collect resources, and then you build and expand, and then you play again. And then we have the ad loop, which is you play, you're offered an award, you watch an ad, and then you get an award, and then you go back to playing. And so what we found is that a lot of developers kind of treat these two loops as separate things. They'll first, they'll focus on the core loop, so they'll build their game, and then when their game is completed, they kind of think of ads as an afterthought. And they think about, okay, now that my game is completed, where can I shove these ads in? And what we found is that if you do that, you inevitably end up interrupting the gameplay experience. And so, um, you know, one of the great things about the ads, the analytics, and IAP is that they're available from the day one. From the moment you open up the editor and you start building your game. And so that means that you can start really thinking about your IAP and your ad strategy before your game is completed, when you're building your game. You don't have to wait until your game is completed in order to take advantage of these services. And by doing that, you can build a monetization strategy that actually fits your game. So here's an example um, where the core game loop and the ad loop are really working together. And so in this example, the ads are placed strategically. That means that the ad is shown to the player at the right time and that it occurs um, at a natural point in the storyline where it doesn't interrupt the gameplay, it actually adds va value to the player, and sometimes the player might actually like watching the ad. And so what we found is that if you build an ad strategically into the gameplay versus just showing the, shoving an ad in and thinking of it as an afterthought, you can have dramatically improved performance in your game and in your players. And so here's a really good example. So this is an example from a really popular casual game. And so when they first were showing the ads, you can see that less than 10% of the audience was opting in to click the ad. And that's because the ad was placed in a really poor placement. Um, it didn't make sense, it didn't fit with the storyline of the game, and so no one was clicking on it. And so by leveraging Unity Ads expertise, uh, what they did is they redid the placement, and now you can see that almost overnight, um, the number of people who were opting in for the ad had increased from 10% to 35%. And that's because the ad was strategically placed, and it was placed at the right point at the right time. And this, uh, for this specific app, it actually led to a three times increase in revenue. And so what we've seen is that this isn't a new case. It's not a unique case. So here's another example from Next Games, uh, creators of Compass Point West, and um, AMC is Walking Dead, No Man's Land. And so what they found here is that um, because they had such a good placement for their ad and it was strategically placed, um, the majority of their players, 75 to 80%, were opting in to watch an ad. So if you do this really, really well, most of your players will um, actually keep playing your game and most of them will opt in to watch an ad. Um, and this led to increased engagement, increased engagement, player engagement, and also increase in revenue. And so across our network, we're seeing similar positive effects where the right ad can actually increase player engagement. And so because Unity Analytics and Unity Ads are so tightly integrated, we're actually able to measure the effect of an ad um, on the player's long-term performance. And so here you can see um, what the day one retention and LTV looks like for players who haven't seen an ad. And then once you've seen an ad, you can see that there's a huge impact on day one retention, jumping from 37% to 51%, and also a long-term increase in um, LTV. And so what this means specifically in Asia is um, that we've seen explosive growth in the region. So just last year alone in Asia, um, the share of Unity Ads Network increased from 11% to 23%. Um, like I said earlier, Unity is committed to the success of uh, developers in APAC, and so we have dedicated sales teams that are here based in your region to help you out to make sure that you know, the right ad is being placed at the right, uh, the right ad is shown at the right time to increase overall player engagement in LTV. All right, so Unity Analytics, IAP, and ads, these services are free. They're free, they're free, they're available to you today. They're built into the engine, they require no SDKs, they're super easy to use, um, and they're here to enable your success. Um, you have these tools at your disposal, and they live in the editor, and they're available to you right when you start um, your game development. Don't let your monetization strategy, don't let your analytics strategy, don't let your IP strategy be an afterthought. Take advantage of these tools, take advantage of the fact that they're free and that you have them now, and really let them be part of your game development. Um, so that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take some. Also, uh, the Unity team will be here. We have a booth. Again, feel free to stop by and talk with us more. We'd love to talk with you. So the question is, um, are there kind of region-specific strategies for where to put an ad at the time? Uh, yes. That's yeah, and so um, the short answer is that we're currently in the process of kind of coming up with kind of best practices. And so starting with um, the example we showed here uh, with Next Games, this is kind of the first starting point. What you'll see coming out from the uh, Unity Ads team is that we'll have a greater emphasis on kind of education 
and um, kind of uh, giving developers more insight as to where the right point is to um, place an ad. And so we'll also be working really closely with the regional teams. And so um, we'll working with them to kind of make sure, and if there are differences in, you know, how Singaporean users versus Japanese users versus, um, I guess, European users or American users, we'll make sure to highlight those in the um, materials. I think going forward, we'll probably have like localized case studies and localized kind of best practices. And so you'll definitely see that from the localized teams, well, sorry, the local teams. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I refer to your slides uh, with the 23% market um, penetration. Yes. Uh, across, in, in, is this data for Android? Uh, so I believe this is across um, iOS and Android. 23% of the entire market. Uh, for, the Unity ad, for the Unity ad network. Okay. Yeah, so that means that the number of impressions, 23% um, uh, of them, of the impressions from the Unity ad network were from APAC, as oh. opposed to 11% from the year before. I see, I see. Okay. Yeah. Right, so if you have any questions about, again, analytics, IAP, or ads, we'll be here uh, all week. So please stop by our booth. Thank you guys so much. Thank you.